Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, November 1st, 2013. And we're getting close to winter time here in Canada. We actually had a bit of snow the other day, but it's melted. It was just about an inch or two. This is what usually happens at this time of the year until it gets full-blown winter. As you can see, I've got a lot of junk here behind the shop. I've been busy for the last week or two just clearing out junk and sending some to the scrap. I actually gave some scrap to another YouTuber called Bocephus McGuire. He came and grabbed a pickup truck full and he ended up getting 40 bucks at the scrap dealer for it. And by the way, this is scrap. That scrap, I basically stripped all the parts that I would ever think I could use on those. When it comes to older equipment like this, I don't bother keeping too many parts because I don't see too many older blowers like that come in the shop anymore. So it's just a tip out there for you guys that are starting out. Sometimes when you start out, you're not sure if you should keep everything or just be picky as to what you keep. Well, after a while, you're going to learn that it's best just to keep stuff that's modern that people will want parts off of. Now, keeping one older blower like this won't take up too much space in your shop or your backyard. But if you start keeping duplicates of everything, then you're going to realize it's way too much space being used up. A lot of people have asked me, what do you do with your old motor oil and gas? Well, what I do is I put them in large pails like this. When they're full, I take them to a guy in town that takes the oil. He takes the oil off your hands for free and he dumps it in a large container and he probably ends up selling it after. Also, I want to thank all of you guys who have sent me some monetary donations in the last two weeks. I really appreciate that. The money is spent wisely. Most of it goes back into my shop here and the rest goes to paying for some medications for my wife. Even though we have a universal health care system here in Canada, there are some prescriptions that are not paid unless you have a specific drug plan for that. So I do end up spending some money every month that I will never see again. Somebody asked me a little while ago, what do you do when you can't fit a socket in a specific area to take off, let's say, a carburetor? Well, what I often do is grab a socket and grind it down. For example, this socket here was ground down. You can see the edges are much thinner. This allows me to get in a tighter area to remove a nut or a bolt. I actually ground this socket down to take off a bolt nut or something like that on a Kohler carburetor. Now, I don't use my most expensive sockets when I do that. I just grab one that I have duplicates of and grind it down. Even if you had to buy a new socket to do this, if you calculate the cost it would take you to get a specific tool, it's much cheaper to even buy a socket and grind it down like this. The only thing you want to watch for is that you don't grind it down too much because it's going to get weak and crack. So far this one has not cracked. And by the way this was a quarter inch drive socket and I think it was a 3.8 socket or a 10 millimeter socket. Sometimes to save yourself some downtime you're just better off to make your own tool. My next tip today is about what to watch out for when you go buy a used MTD snowblower. These blowers here are prone to crack where the two parts of the blower meet together. As you can see here it's cracked where the drive unit is. Sometimes you'll see a crack on the actual auger housing over here. And sometimes the crack gets so big that your auger belts will come off when you go to use the blower. They'll break up even if they're brand new belts you put a new set and the same thing will happen again. And here's another MTD snowblower and this one is cracked on the auger housing as I was talking about. Now because this is a blower that belongs to a friend of mine, I'm just going to weld it up and hopefully it's going to last a winter or two. But usually when I do this for customers, I end up replacing the whole shroud at the front. Because if you just do a weld repair, most people will come back complaining a year later if it starts to blow belts again. That's why I'm very cautious as to whom I'm going to choose to do a welding job on these snowblowers. And by the way, this is an MTD snowblower with tracks. I hardly ever see these come in my shop. This blower here is pretty good because it has the steerable track. It's kind of like an excavator. If you press one button here, it will lock one track and then it's going to turn a lot easier. Whereas some other tracked snowblowers, you literally have to physically move the machine yourself to turn it. This is a lot easier to use, I find. And this blower here is easy to move even if the engine's not running. I do have a video that shows what to look for when you're buying a used snowblower. The link to that video is underneath today's video. So just go click on it to watch it before you make your purchase. Also because the winter is approaching in many countries, I also have a video that shows how to winterize your lawnmower. The link to that video is underneath today's video as well. 
I had a YouTuber ask me the other day if it's true that the carburetor air filter bracket on the Briggs & Stratton Quantum engine can warp. Well, my answer to that is yes. The plastic can warp, especially where the gasket meets the carburetor. Specifically this area right here, and as I've mentioned in many videos, if you don't have a gasket here or it's damaged, or if there's air coming in through here, the primer may not work and it's going to be really hard to start your lawnmower. So even if you replace the gasket and you find it's still hard to start, you prime it and it won't go, it's quite possible that this bracket here has warped. I've seen it many times. One way I've gotten over that problem sometimes is to double up on the gasket here. So I'll end up putting two gaskets. Sometimes it'll fix it, but oftentimes I end up replacing the whole plastic bracket. Again, just to reiterate the importance of this being flush on your carburetor, if it's not, the primer will not work properly and your mower will be very hard to start. Recently I posted some videos on Briggs & Stratton Quantum engines. The lawnmower I worked on in those videos had no throttle cable and somebody asked me, can you put a throttle cable on a lawnmower without one? Well, my answer to that is yes, you can. Now take this older lawnmower here, it's pretty beat up, it's got a Briggs & Stratton Quantum engine which is an older version of the one that I worked on in my previous videos. Now this one does have a throttle cable. You can see it goes all the way down to the carb. Now the linkage configuration will be different than one that does not have a throttle cable. But to answer the question, can you put a throttle cable on one that does not? Well, what you would have to do for that is replace all the components over here to the newer engine without a throttle cable. Basically, you could just grab the whole assembly here, including the carb, and just do a swap like that, install your throttle cable, and that's it. There's going to be some differences to one that did not have a throttle cable, so you want to take good note of that. By taking everything from here, you're not going to be missing any parts. This lawnmower here is approximately 15 to 20 years old, and the engine has not changed much to the more recent Briggs & Stratton Quantum engines like this. Most of the changes are all in these components over here. So again, just do a swap from one engine to the other and you should have a lawnmower with a throttle cable now. Personally, I liked having a lawnmower with a throttle cable because you could adjust the speed instead of having it rev all the time even if you're not cutting grass. But nowadays when you buy a lawnmower, it's pretty well the set speed. It's the same thing on a lot of newer snowblowers as well. So if you want to do the swap, just find yourself an older lawnmower that somebody doesn't want anymore and swap out all the parts. A YouTuber asked me the other day, what should I do if the chain is really loose inside the transmission on my snowblower? Well, the best solution to this is to replace the chain. But before you do that, check all the wheel bushings on your snowblower to make sure that they're not worn out. If the bushings or bearings are really worn out, that could cause your chain to become much looser than it should be. If the bushings and bearings are good then you should replace the chain because over time it ends up stretching and you might look at the chain and think well I can take off a link to make it tighter but sometimes taking off a link makes it too short but if you don't do something the chain keeps coming off the sprockets. My best solution is take the chain off bring it to your local small engine shop and get a matching chain. So that'll be it for today's Q&A guys thanks for watching and have yourselves a great weekend.